Hello, race fans. Welcome to another episode of Short Track Guys Podcast, brought to you in part by Story and Black Roofing. We got you covered. Metal, slate, tile, asphalt, shingle. We're locals you can trust. As always, Story and Black Roofing, right here in Pensacola, Florida. Give them a call. I'm your host, Thomas Faddis, alongside two of the same short track guys in the studio. As always, Jim Pokerant, driver of the 07 Sportsman here at Five Flag Speedway in our backyard. And Ted Baber, or Ted Baber Video Productions. What's up, guys? Good evening. Howdy, howdy, howdy. How y'all doing? Oh, we're doing grand. <laughs> it's a short track weekend coming up. I know it's a doubleheader, but it's not a big, big doubleheader. But in any event, it is a doubleheader here at Five Flag Speedway and then at Mobile International. Sweet, right? Yeah, yeah, we got the modified, the mayhem, Friday night, and then the pro late models in Mobile on Saturday night. Man, I'm telling you, big or small, Double headers are always awesome here locally. Our version of the ground pounders will be there. <laughs> yep. Well, I mean, it's it's a local double header, which is cool because, you know, us local guys get to shine a little bit. Yep. So we're going to try to make Mobile Saturday night. Definitely going to run Five Flags Friday night. So we'll see where it goes from there. And the Modifieds of Mayhem always put on a good show. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Unless Cody Stickler shows up. Well, then in that case, everybody's running for second. Pretty much. Yeah, unless he <laughs> breaks. You know, you're pretty much. I mean, you know, like we've said it before, we'll say it again. He's got started dead last in a 20-something car field at Snowball Derby in a 75 lapper. And by lap 50, he was leading by half a straightaway. So, yeah, but uh, you still got Jeff Letts and you, you got know? some of the big the big uh, guns and modified. I wonder if Augie's going to show Probably. I, he, well, I don't know what his other commitments are. So I'm Yeah, Augie, sure. Augie Grill tries to run with him when he can. I mean, you've got some good cars. I mean, it's yeah. it, it could be a good show, but man, I don't know what Cody Stickler has or has found, but it's big. Yeah, he just won a race uh, here just recently down there at Auburndale, I believe. Yep. Uh, in, in a in a pro light model race. I yep. think, I don't know if it was a modified, I think it was a pro light model he came come away with a win. But, you know, Cody Stickler is one of those names that just, when he shows up, it's like, oh, God. <laughs> well, he sat on the pole at Bristol. Yeah. Oh, yeah, right. I mean, and that's big. Very. So, but we're we're planning, we're tra- we changed some stuff on the old sportsman. We found a problem that I'm just sick that we ain't found yet, but we finally found it. We got it fixed. A uh, big shout out to James Patrick for his help. Um, Daryl mcdonald the mcdonald muffler mafia for their help they hooked me up with a uh sway bar which i desperately needed they had several of them thank you parker for bringing it to me um just gotta thank uh you know the gens family for putting up with me being in their shop and um hopefully we can get them a good finish man i'm i'm don't think we could win the championship it's going to be tight but i think we got a shot at getting to second and it's going to be uh, me versus two McDonald's for the rest of the season for second place in points. So that's going to be interesting racing the Muffler Mafia. Yeah, <laughs> that's a, a bunch that's always stout. And, and Parker has started to come on as the the lead man in, in that. Yeah, he team. finished he finished third over in Mobile yeah. a few weeks ago. So I mean, he's he's podium and he got a win earlier this year. So yeah, yeah Parker's pretty tough, man. And they're they're I mean they're no slouches. They're fun to race with. The thing about it is, you can race those guys hard. We race each other clean, and the racing is always good. Yep, always. Yep, Sportsman Friday night, Sportsman Saturday night mobile as well. Uh, Crown Stock going to run double dip too Friday night and Saturday night mobile. But uh, the Modified the Mayhem, the Pro Late Models, I get the Outlaws Friday night at uh, at Five Flags. It's going to be a good event uh, both weekend uh, days, Friday and Saturday night. Ooh, man, be there. Yes. Get your butt out there. Eat a hot dog, drink a beer, drink a soda, watch the races from the live from the grandstands. I get you can watch it on your phone or your phone or whatever at home, but it's not the same if you're not there no. to smell the fuel. Mm-mm. Come down in the pit, say hello to the driver, say hello to me. I'd be glad to talk to you. I enjoyed I enjoyed interacting with the fans. A lot of us do. Um, and like I said, man, for the amount of cars we have, we put on a pretty good show. Come spend a few dollars and enjoy the races. Now, we can testify. We know somebody that likes to talk. I'll just put it like that. I'll leave it there. Okay. <laughs> me? No. Yeah. no. Not talking about me. Not no at all. Way. No. I'm, I, I'm always quiet. Are you uh, kidding me? You sit in the corner and eat your cheese. That's mm-hmm. right. I don't say nothing to nobody. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> okay. I better quit. I'm going to get struck by lightning for <laughs> lying. We're going to be ducking. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. No, it, it'll be a good show, man. Mobile, Mobile's going to put on a good show. Eddie's, Eddie's been doing a great job over there. We're glad to see that place back open. I would love to support it every single race, man, but it's just tough with this crappy economy. Let's go, Brandon. 
And um, <laughs> just remember that in November, folks. Sneak it in there. Yep. But anyway, <laughs> let's let's go to help support some racing. I mean, we went to yeah. Southern this past Saturday night, helped my buddy Mike out. It was fun to watch the short track guys over there battle it out. Some good good racing on the dirt. So, you know, support your local short track. Yeah, get out to it. We're seeing too many of them getting closed. We, there is a, one that we know is being recovered, but and reopen but it's there's kind two. of rare <laughs> there's two right now one in florida one in tennessee we're supporting both of them we want to see every short track open and racing and guys i know it money's tight but you know try to get out there try to try to watch some races man yeah. it's it's we we need you yeah that will be newport speedway in newport tennessee we're yeah. going to get to that a little bit later but yeah that goes along with bronson um you know coming back to life uh which we do like to support when we do find out about it and uh we thank them for bringing that out there, and we have the opportunity to get it out to our listeners uh, to, to, to support the tracks and yeah. uh, give them the news that, uh, you know, maybe they have relatives or maybe they're on vacation, they're traveling that way, and they happen to be in the area when they do open and uh, go go visit and support their short tracks. So uh, Newport Speedway is coming up. We'll give a little bit more once I get to the page and tell you all about, about how that's come about. Um, they're doing renovations now to, to redo the track and – uh, get everything redone and refurbished and um, get ready. I think they've got six races hopefully planned for the the 2024 season. Uh, it's probably going to be midsummer, maybe late summer before they get started. But um, a little bit more detail coming in here later in the show. We do want to go back over the, the Joe Shear Classic that we started last week uh, and the ACT, which Ted's got a lot of rundown on that one. Uh, the Joe Shear Classic uh, up there at Madison. What can you say? Former Snowball Derby winner, two-time, yeah. Ty Majeski. <laughs> the Ty Minator back at it again, <laughs> as we would, yeah, well, I won't say expect, but we wouldn't be surprised if he... <laughs> yeah, Ty Majeski, Gabe Summers, Brett Edmonds, Casey Johnson, Justin Mondike run up the top five there. But man, there the list goes down uh, a long way, and there's some trouble along the way. We don't know exactly what happened to some of those big names, but... Uh, Ty Majeski wins again. Yeah. Just uh, the dude is just he's got it. <laughs> oh yeah, you know what's super cool? This was his thirty sixth super late model win in the Joe Shear Classic. Joe Shear's number was number thirty six. I wow. thought that was a cool fact. <laughs> so I mean, you know, to to do that to honor a guy like Joe Shear and Joe Shear Junior yeah. is Ty Majeski's crew chief. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, so you, that's that's a cool little tie together right there. It's thirty six win. Joe Shear's number was thirty six, and Joe Shear Junior's his crew chief. Joe Shear was a was a yeah I, yeah we one know. of those we, guys yeah. <laughs> on the short track circuit back in the day. But between him and Dick Trickle and guys like Bob Seneca and Mike Eddy and these guys that used to battle it out, Mark Martin they used to battle it out week after week all over short tracks up north, five six days a week to to make a living. And Joe Shear was one of those guys. Okay. So I mean, you know, we we miss him and being around, but. I mean, I used to read stock car magazines about these guys. These guys were my heroes. Yeah. Guys like Dick Trickle, Joe Shear, like I said, Mike Eddy. These guys are heroes to me. Well, you know, <laughs> they're big. Yeah, uh-huh. it's good and, to and, see Majeski get the win. Though. And the numerologists are losing their mind right now. Two numbers? What am I going to do? Yeah, he <laughs> said he was pretty cool. You know, he didn't realize it was his 36th win. Um, he said it was neat, you know, that uh, – it just meant to be, he guessed. Uh, the car was good, especially after we put tires on it, made a little adjustment, and then the car drived, uh, drove. The car drove exactly like he wanted it to. Um, I collect- think he's, this is like the last two or three races that he's finished. He um, He's real good on the long run, and a lot of them had com- competition with him on the short run, but once his car settled in, uh, it seemed like it just, you know, it was, uh, he just started passing everybody. Well, yeah. He had 3,600 reasons to win that race too. From yeah. Me, had a bounty on his head. So yeah, he won an extra yeah. $3,600 too for winning that race for the bounty. But I'm going to tell you something. Uh, the, the Bubba Pollard's another one that, that year they battled for the, for the Rattler. They're yeah. both long run drivers. They both work on their long run speed. And that's to me, and in, in here lately in super late models, you got to have long run speed. Yeah, it's been kind of unusual. Most of the time, there's a lot of short runs, a lot of cautions, a lot of things going on. But here recently, it hasn't happened as much. No, nah, these guys are driving a little bit more respect. I mean, yeah. you had some of these guys that have been doing this a while. There's a few, you know, buttholes in the bunch, but <laughs> for the most part, I mean, you go back and, like I said, watch that battle between Majeski and Pollard yeah. for the for the they they raced each other with respect. Mm-hmm. It would have been easy for Majeski to, to right left rear Bubba and knock him out of the way and win the race, but he didn't. He raced him with respect. Bubba raced him with respect. That's the way it should be. I mean, you're either going to get respect, or you're going to get the chrome horn. You're you're hoping for the respect so you don't have to 
you know, put it on the trailer in several pieces or parts. Yeah. That's true, but the problem you have is these young kids nowadays don't race respect because they don't care. They're not staying in right. super late model racing for very long. They're just using it to pass through to get to ARCA to move up the ladder into the cup and the trucks and the Xfinity series. It's so just a rung in the ladder. To yeah, them. they don't. They don't. They, and plus, they don't have to work on the car. Their mommy and daddy writes a check. They rent the car for a few races. And Donnie Wilson doesn't care if you scatter it all over the front straightaway because you have a crash damage clause and you have to pay for the damage that you do to the car. He'll just build you another one. <laughs> They'll just put, they'll pull like, well, you know, what's his name wrecked at Five Flags? They pulled another trailer and he goes to Mobile and wins. Yeah. Cole yeah. Butcher. Cole, yeah. But Cole Butcher doesn't race that well. Well, I don't know. I've seen him run over people. I ain't going to say that either. I, that would be dumb to say. But I mean, to be honest with you, all these guys are just looking for a rung in the ladder. They, guys mm-hmm. like Majeski. Jesse may make it to the big time. He really doesn't have the money, but he's you know racing in the trucks. But I mean, guys like him and Pollard, they they learn to race each other with respect. Yeah, uh, you have to. <laughs> yeah, there's there's quite a few of them out there. I mean, there are some that uh, that do take that precedence that um, you know that start through and and get underneath your car in the shop and really don't know the difference between you know a shock and a spring. They get in it and drive. They don't really pick up a wrench and work on it. The other ones, like you're talking about. They're the ones that show the respect. Yeah, and we yeah. did. We did find out uh, the only caution occurred on lap fifty during that Joe Shear was John DeAndreus Jr. had a tire go down, made contact with the outside wall, and that must have ended his day because he really didn't have the turnout he expected. And you know, he I think he he ended up setting fast time last year, and yeah. um, he's really good up there on the short tracks, and especially Madison. Um, at your slinger, you know, he'll be involved with the nationals and hope he'll make me make it down here for the Derby week this year. But, um, we'll keep on his former short track guys, podcast guest, John DeAngelis Jr. Uh, from Hubertus, uh, had a tire go down and, uh, unfortunate luck with the wall. So we'll, uh, keep an eye on that for future races, uh, as far as they go. Yeah, that wall doesn't move. <laughs> it's not going to get out your way. No, I've, I've tried. It doesn't move. That's for damn sure. It's probably why I walk with no. it. My hip hurts and my damn neck's bothering me from crashing these things. But Well, while we're in the area uh, up there, Madison and Wisconsin, we just move a little east of that uh, up in Canada, the ACT. And uh, Ted got a rundown on a big event that happened over the weekend uh, that we started that would, covering last week. Yeah, that would be the 26th Annual Community Bank 150 Thunder Road International Speed Bowl at Bear, Vermont. Uh, the unofficial results are as follows. Uh, we uh, we'll start off. It's, well, hey, let's start at the top. That'd be a pretty good idea. Yeah, that's what we usually do. Uh, Christopher Pelkey came over with the win. He's from, well, he's from right in that area, so that probably helps having a little familiarity with the track. And then uh, running on down the list of Chip Griner, Gabe Brown, Jamie Swallow Jr. After been <laughs> important to get the junior in there. Caden Fisher, Derek. Gluchaki. Yeah, some of these are going to be fun, so give me a break here. Keegan Lamson, Jason Corliss, uh, DJ Shaw, Sean Swallow, that's why we have to be careful, Cason Beatty, Brooks Clark, Brian Wall Jr., Jason, J- okay, Jonathan Bouvret, I hope, or maybe Bouvret. Hey, it's from Canada. It could go either way. You know? Could. <laughs> it could, could be, yeah. Uh, French. Now, now, the next one, I know I got this one nailed because we got a lot of folks from Louisiana down here. <laughs> and, and so I'm not going to mess up Cooper Bouchard. Going to have that one nailed down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Eric Sands, Jesse Switzer, Brandon Barker, uh, Alexander Tardiff, Jimmy Hebert from, he was in 20th position from Williamstown, Vermont, Marcel Gravel, Derek O'Connell, Brandon Lampshire. Stephen Martin, Roland Robinson, Bobby Kieran, Jamie Sorrell, Scott Dragon, and Cody Blake was the 29th uh, entry and finisher in that event. Quite quite the run they had up there. ACT, cool. American Canadian Tour. Yep, yeah, we've uh, touched base on those uh, those races uh, quite a bit uh, for the last several seasons that we've been on. Uh, ACT is uh, really big, and they in conjunction with the Cars Tour uh, and the Jeg Series the um, uh, CRA Association usually get together and pair with ACT in certain parts of that northeastern sector of the United States. So um, a lot of good names, and hopefully we'll see some of those guys come down and, and venture in some of the, maybe the ASA Stars National Tour races, or maybe the Derby, or something you know, in, in Nashville, and I don't know. We'll see. We'll but, see how uh, far down here they get. Yep. I'm sure they put on just as big races up there as we see down here. So uh, we like to stay in touch with all 
kind of all the sectors, if you will, the United States, go to Washington. Um, we haven't crossed the border into Mexico, and hopefully we can stay on our side of the fence. Um, but you never know. I think uh, NASCAR has gotten the talk up of taking one of the tracks away and then venturing over in a road course to Mexico, which is, you know, Dale Jr. really kind of... And even Denny Hamlin's not really in favor of that. Bringing back Chicago is one of the things. and wants to keep it over here in the Ovals, but um, huh. I don't or, know. We'll see. Or Kentucky. They talked about Kentucky. They said that the bad part about Mexico was they had to have security around the trailers at all times. Yeah. Because <laughs> they had several of them got broke into when they were down there. So, yeah, I don't Imagine know that. about all that place. Yeah. <laughs> no. Be kind of, yeah, yeah. A little dicey. <laughs> Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll make it from uh, Madison to Canada, and we'll come back down to North Carolina at Altima, uh, North Carolina facility. It was a family affair at Ace Speedway Friday night with the Carson and Caden Fopple. Yeah. Defending late model stock car and pro late model uh, champions uh, take the sweep this past weekend, uh, Carson Quapple being uh, the brother and the son of um, one of the Quapples that ran uh, the truck series and was in the top tiers uh a while ago but man they just seem to be uh taking everything uh by storm every time they buckle up carson quapple brendan queen ryan millington bobby mccarty and chad mccombie top five in the late model stocks and then carson quapple takes the win in a pro late model i mean i mean the field uh drivers that we go through just uh keep getting bigger and better yeah well, the thing about the Quapples is Carson's been, uh, Caden's been running, or as Carson, been running the uh, Xfinity series and has had two top fives in the first two starts and had a shot at both wins. So he's moving up very quickly through the ranks at Junior Motorsports. Yeah, I'm that eight car. Um, 88. Yeah. Same one that Bubba drove. Oh, well, uh, the late model yeah. stock yeah, in the eight. But yeah, the yeah. talking about the number and the Xfinity races that he's been in. Uh, I think Caden, you know, his uh, his brother is right behind Spencer Davis, Caden Honeycutt, William Swalich, and Connor Jones around the top five of that pro late model, and even just as big names there too. Uh, but I I think Caden's going to follow his brother's footsteps, and you'll see that a uh, like a a Kyle and a Kurt Busch kind of brother sibling rivalry on the track here in the future. Well, yeah, you got to consider dad was a truck champion, so that, yeah. it, it's in their blood, and they're both pretty dad gum sporty. In the DNA. <laughs> yeah, come out. So that's, that's going to be pretty cool. And I'll tell you somebody to watch out for is that Caden Honeycutt kid. He does really well. He doesn't have a lot of money, but he gets to race a lot, and he does well. And it doesn't matter if it's a dirt modified or an asphalt late model. He runs pretty good. So he's somebody else to watch out for in the future. Be good to see him run pretty dadgum sporty. Yeah, that's true. Uh, especially with the likes of Caden Honeycutt and William Sawalich, Connor Jones, we've thrown around. Those are some big names there. TJ DeCare, uh, Jimmy Renfrew Jr., um, Ashton Higgins, Max Reeves, Nick Loden, those kind of guys. Katie Hettinger, right. not really the complete infant, uh, the finish that she was looking for, uh, 16th in that 71 car, but, uh, the list goes on and that's just the pro late models, but those guys, uh, with the late model stocks and uh, the pro ladles usually running together too. Yeah. Um, man, what an event. I wish they'd come down here and run at five flags. That'd be cool. <laughs> That'd be nice. <laughs> That'd yeah, be it would be pretty adventure. sweet. Yeah. I just saw a story where uh, Jake Johnson, who's one of the kids that won the modified race that moved, what's his name out of the way? I can't think of his name at the moment. He's driving for the Bowler Racing Enterprises in the Ground Pounder Modifieds. Yeah. Gave them their first feature win since 2017, back to back at Moed Knox Speedway. Wow! I just saw that. I thought that was pretty dadgum cool because the 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 bowler number three or boiler, I can't remember. I really have pronounced your name, but that that modified the old number three is old blue. They call it. It's been around forever. It hasn't won a race in a long time. <laughs> and Jake put it in victory lane for him. I just thought that was a neat story. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Cool deal is man. in store for that one. Oh, we'd love to see the old old tour guys get cars get a win. <laughs> and I mean, the old that, iron too. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, man. That, those cars are. It looks just like this. It has the same number forever. So I love it. <laughs> yeah, anytime you run across that, and we're you know we're in the business, uh, we might as well go ahead and give a shout out. Yeah. That's the more the merrier, right? That's right. Especially the ground pounders. We love those cars. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, and this has been a long wait too. This is a uh, the Easy Clean Super Late Model Series, and this is a Super Late Model Series that we brought up from Canada. That was their inaugural year. I believe that last year uh, so. from Canada, uh, we had made contact with them uh, via the internet. We were going to let them know that we give them a shout out. Uh, part of our, our venturing into sectors of the country, you know, we go to Canada and, and Washington and California, that kind of thing. Uh, the Fog City Auto Spa 150 at Petty International Raceway 
uh, New Brunswick, Canada, uh, the super light model, the Easy Clean super light model series. They did pick up that sponsor um, with the, I guess, you know, Dylan Gospie is going to be their defending champion for that season. Their season opener, by the way, uh, coming up um, this weekend. Um, well, those are the expected entries, actually. It's on the 23rd, but the expected entries of May 8th, um, you know, Ryan Messer, Ashton Tucker, Kent Vincent, Devin Snell, Dylan Gosby, the defending champion, uh, Darren McKinnon, uh, Greg Fahey, Brody Lewis, and Lonnie Somerville, uh, just to name a, a few. They've got 22 entries in that Fog City Auto Spa 150. This is the season open, and we will keep up with that throughout the season for the Super Late Model Series. Right. By Easy Clean. So, the big uh, shout out to them. Good guys. Cool deal up in Canada. I'm surprised they're allowed to race up in Canada. <laughs> Wait, stuff's been going up there. Woof. Oh, yeah, this is true. Yeah, they're, they're prime minister. Okay, mm. so but boss, anyway, we so won't boss. go there. But, <laughs> but they we're glad to see them getting their season underway. Good luck up there, guys. Race and have some fun. And, and yeah. folks, get out and support them. Yes, yeah. <laughs> while you can. Yes, right. Go to the races. Yeah. Well, to touch on the ASA Stars National Tour, we don't have a whole lot of this. This is uh, May 23rd at Hickory. We do have the Tar Heel 250. Uh, there's going to be a bunch of names, and the only one we know of is Josh oh, Berry. Yeah. Josh Berry. Yeah, that's it. That 62 no. card. It's entered in that race, and I'm sure a lot of those guys that we've mentioned that are in the ASA Tour uh, from the Sunshine State uh uh, 200, and then I think they did Clyde Hart Memorial was their second one, or their first one, actually, in February, which Bubba Pollard took the win there. Um, I'm sure a lot of those guys are going to repeat for this third race in Hickory, but uh, that will be in the future. We'll bring up the entry list as they become available. Right. Yeah, you talk about a historic racetrack. Yes. <laughs> Hickory, Hickory started as dirt, came asphalt. There's been cup races run there. Um, famous drivers straight through there. Dale Jarrett got his first start at Hickory. We're a very cool racetrack. Look forward to seeing them guys get after it at Hickory. If those walls could talk. Oh, man, you ain't lying. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. Uh, yeah, and before we uh, get to the downside of this episode, I do want to get out uh, the, the touch-up for Newport Speedway. Uh, the purchase is complete. Uh, I told them via the uh, Internet through a message that we would give them a shout-out, uh, Did like we did Brunson Speedway. Uh, this one happens to be uh, East Tennessee's three-tenths mile Newport Speedway. Uh, Chuck Ward, uh, he is an East Tennessee native and a proprietor of multiple East Tennessee businesses, uh, including Chuck Ward Real Estate. I uh, purchased the racetrack, and um, they are diligently working on getting this uh, this facility back up and running. Um, we do want to give them a shout-out. and it, uh, It's one of those racetracks. It's a good feel-good story to us because we like – we like reading about uh, stories of tracks that are coming back to life and right. that are being saved instead of destroyed and then apartment buildings or shopping centers taking over uh, because of the noise or whatever the reason may be. But uh, it's a feel-good story of uh, Newport Speedway, and I know a lot of fans in that area can't wait to get back to that. And it is an asphalt track, too. So, right. uh, And, and uh, we looked at the track, too, and it's one of those uh, high bank facilities, <laughs> yeah. in the in the corners anyway. Yeah. You walk up on the edge of that thing, you're going to start running to the bottom end. <laughs> kind of, oh, yeah. <laughs> but good to see it back open and, and the people get it up and running. You, you keep in touch with us up there. We'd love to get all your results and we'll yeah. put them out and We'll talk about you. Same thing with Brunson Speedway. As soon as they get up and running, we're gonna we're gonna discuss them and and uh, just try to get some good racing going on. Because I tell you, man, short track racing can't die. It just can't. No, we can't let that happen. <laughs> no, we it, we can't let it be just a bunch of kids and late models, man. It's got to be the the blue collar guys getting a chance to race. Yeah, everybody's got to get out there, and the support needs to be out there. Sponsorship, you know, if you have an opportunity to sponsor a card, help them out. And just remember in November, if we don't get what we need, there won't be any racing. Just saying. Yeah. Hey, and I want to give a big, big, big shout out to Justin Smith at the Dock of Pensacola Beach. He sponsors my division. I'm the Dock of Pensacola Beach Sportsman Division. He's come up with a deal that every race we have from here the rest of the season, they're going to do a drawing in the driver's meeting of the sportsman drivers, and the winner of the drawing gets a free tire. Well, that's outstanding because oh, that'll yeah. help. That'll help the drivers because it, it reduces the expense a little bit and it gives you uh, about one hundred thirty-five dollars worth. Yeah, I know. You know, it's pretty expensive. <laughs> but hey, thank you, Justin, and thank you for sponsoring our division, man. We really appreciate you. You've done such a great job. You always talk to me, and and you, you don't talk down to anybody. You always look at us as equals, and you really bless our division, and we appreciate you, brother. Yep. Support the dock on Pensacola Beach. If you get out there, stop by and have a drink. 
Yeah. Yeah. And do mention Short Track Guys podcast while you're out there. Mention us and (laughs) mention the fact that uh, you're a Short Track fan and that you go to Five Flags Speedway. Yep. And speaking of our fans, uh, we are uh, going to put a contest together. Uh, The Memorial Day Short Track Guys podcast contest. Uh, It is open to all our listeners and we have must uh, five official entries to make it count. This is for a Short Track Guys podcast hat and shirt combo. Uh, If you can take the GP which is the Grand Prix of Monaco, uh, the Indy 500, and the Coke 600, and pick your winners for each race, and the average finisher with those three combined races will win the combo hat and the shirt presented by Short Track Guys Podcast. So that's Memorial Day. You've got some time. It's the end of the month, almost two and a half weeks now, to get your picks in. (laughs) Um, Let us know, Facebook, uh, Short Track Guys Podcast, and... Take your name, your phone number, uh, your email address, and you pick for those three races, and the average finisher of those three will win that combo. Sound good? <laughs> and I think the three of us are going to participate, too, but we don't count for winning. No, we we've we already got hats and yeah. T-shirts. Yeah. We don't need one, so it just <laughs> nope. will be fine. That's a cool idea, man. I'm glad we're doing that. And, uh, you know, just get your picks together. We'll figure it out. And uh, the, winner, the winner gets a, uh, one of our nice hats and T-shirts, and we'll go from there. Yes. I look forward to it. Hard. Yep, very, yep, yep. very hard. Very hard. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's the ad- average finish, though. You don't have to win them. Right. It's no. just the average finish. You have a win and then two last place finishes, and you're ahead of everybody else. Um, and then again, you know, we're looking for five official entries right. uh, to make it count. Uh, we might bend the rules a little bit, but we'll see what we can get. Right. Yeah, that's right. Let's do this. <laughs> We'd like all million listeners to respond, but <laughs> yes. uh, I don't know if we can handle a million. <laughs> just put your, put your entries in, and let's see what we can do to get you a hat and a T-shirt. Right. Sounds good. And if you don't win one, buy one from us. We would appreciate it. <laughs> that is right. Uh, shirts and hats. Uh, yeah, shirt, T-shirts and hats are on sale. Um, and we are looking real close again to reordering. It's amazing. But um, it's what keeps us going along with the listeners. And uh, Story and Black Roofing, thank you very much for your support. Uh, hey, McDonald Muffler, why don't we just say that too? Mm-hmm. Uh, thank you for your support in the past. Hopefully uh, we'll get back in touch and get you back on board. Uh, thanks to all our listeners and you guys in the studio, uh, as always, every week, Short Track Racing, delivering the good news. Uh, it's always a pleasure. And um, you guys have anything else before we do our, our infamous sign-off? Not at the moment. No, nope. just support Short Track Racing. Get out there to the races. and Enjoy whatever. Support us. Make sure you like, tag, share, follow, and, and make sure that you... Uh, Give us a five star review wherever. Help us move up the charts. Help us get grow and share us with your friends. If you're, we've got a listener in Alaska. We found out. Hey, shout out to him. Give it to your friends. Stay warm. <laughs> get get everybody rolling on this because we yeah. want to stay in business and we need your help. Right. So, I say uh, one, two, three. Let's go, Brandon. Brandon. Good night, everybody. Be strong, America. Thanks for listening.